All right. Hello, once again, friends. Anthony Florio here with you on the Tone 25 here on YouTube.com. We are talking 2012 World Series. Series starts tomorrow night from AT&T Park in San Francisco as the San Francisco Giants will host the Detroit Tigers in what is sure to be a very exciting World Series. First time matchup. I mean, it's going to be a wonderful series. I mean, I could easily see this going seven games, but right now let's break it down. Um, like we always do here, like I've been doing in my baseball preview video, so let's get down to it. Um, start first with the starting pitching. Um, Detroit, Justin Verlander, Doug Fister, Anibal Sanchez, Max Scherzer, solid rotation from top to bottom. San Francisco, you got Matt Cain, Barry Zito, Tim Lincecum, Madison Bumgarner, Ryan Vogelsong, another solid top to bottom rotation. But I got to give the edge to Detroit here based on the body of work of Justin Verlander. 3-0 and with a .77 ERA. I mean, that is that is huge right there. And, and if, once he gets going, that team gets going. So slight edge to Detroit because of Verlander's body of work. Of course, you know, Scherzer, also an ace in the hole, had that 10 strikeout performance against the Yankees in the clinching game in game four of the ALCS in Detroit last Thursday. Um, but San Francisco, I mean, hey, I mean, even though I'm giving the edge to Detroit, I mean, San Francisco, you know, they're no slouches either. Matt Cain, remember, June 13th, perfect game. We talked about it on Strictly Sports on June 15th. That was the first of the two shows I guess hosted for Derek Ferreira, as you all remember. And then you also have the body of work of Barry Zito, who's uh, had a bit of a bounce back year. Uh, you know, all those years in Oakland, uh, signed that big contract, that lucrative contract, the seven-year $126 million deal. And then, of course, to, uh, the big concern, obviously, for me, and another reason why I give Detroit the edge, Tim Litsicum. I mean, here's a guy who, two, three years ago, was touted as one of the best young pitchers in baseball. And he really had he really had some great stuff. But this year, I mean, he really struggled. And this was not a good year for Tim Litsicum. And if the Giants are going are gonna to win this series, he has to pitch like the Tim Litsicum of old. He's got to look like that Tim Litsicum that, you know, was a Cy Young candidate, a Cy Young, you know, contender. So that's all he's got to do. And and if he does, then maybe San Fran has a chance to win this thing for the second time in three years. So but at the end of the day, I got to get the edge to Detroit based on the body of work of Verlander. And until the Giants get to him or whatever, I don't see uh, Verlander letting up anytime soon. And that's why I think Detroit could win at least a game or two in this series because of Verlander. So we'll see what happens. Um, bullpens. Um, Got to give the slight edge to San Francisco here. I mean, Sergio Romo. I mean, assuming the closer role now because of uh, Brian Wilson, fear the beard, going down with an injury uh, that cost him his season. And... I, I think he's done a fantastic job filling in, and he got the final outs last night in Game 7, even though it was a 9 nothing route, as we all know, a dud Game 7, which is, I have to be honest, pointless, unnecessary, unacceptable, inexcusable, you know the rest. So when it comes to Game 7, I want a five-star classic, and last night's Game 7 with St. Louis and San Fran was anything but a five-star classic. It was an absolute dud from start to finish. So, you know, just my honest opinion, I had to get that off my chest, but... Anyways, um, you go to Detroit's bullpen. Jose Valverde had that disastrous outing game one of the ALCS against the Yankees. Had a 4 nothing lead in the ninth inning, and then he choked it away with uh, letting up those two two-run home runs to Ichiro and then to Raul Labanez. And I think the Giants' bullpen has been just a smidgen better than Detroit's, even though their body of work has been great as well. You know, Phil Coke, who came in and took over the closer role for Valverde, uh, great managerial decision by Jim Leland. Um, bold decision, and he stuck to his guns, and it paid off. And he got the final outs against the Yankees. You know, he was a former Yankee, and he stuck it to his former team. So I don't know what else there is to say. But at the end of the day, based on the body of work, I have to give the Giants bullpen a little bit of an edge here as far as that category goes. Starting offenses, I mean, both teams are loaded from top to bottom. You know, Detroit, Miguel Cabrera. A triple crown winner, first time since 1967, Carl Yastrzemski, Boston Red Sox, and possible dream team. 
you know, um, for, that was the last time it happened before this year. Never thought I'd see that in my lifetime, and I'm so glad I got to see that. I can now say in my lifetime I got to see somebody win a triple crown, and that's pretty damn special. Um, now, if only I can see it happen in the world of horse racing, even though I'm not a big horse racing guy, but, you know, story for another day. But um, look at um, Prince Fielder, who they acquired from Milwaukee in the off season. You know, uh, producing his you know powerful numbers as well, like he uh, like he's always done. Finally, in the big dance, you know, he uh, came up a little short last year with the Milwaukee Brewers, uh, losing to the St. Louis Cardinals in six games, as we all remember. And how sweet it was for him to catch that final out against the Yankees in the ALCS. I mean, that had to have been a gratifying moment for him, maybe the most gratifying moment of his career. That is, unless he wins a World Series ring. So, which his father Cecil Fielder did for the Yankees in 1996 against the Atlanta Braves. Uh, sorry, Fletch, I had to bring that up, but, you know, Michael Fletch, a big Braves fan, uh, of course, the Yankees won that series in six. Cecil Fielder was on that team, and he got his rings. So, And how fitting it would be for Prince Fielder to win a ring with the team that his father played for and had so many great years with. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but he is awesome. We all know that. Him and Cabrera, the, two, uh, the two-headed monster, when it comes to slugging, so yeah, that's going to be an interest. That's going to be a nightmare for the giant pitchers. So we'll see how that plays out in this series. Um, of course, on the other side of the coin, you have um, for San Fran, uh, Marco Scudero. Who, uh, but, but before I get into Scudero, Detroit also has Delman Young, who was the MVP of the ALCS. He's usually the team's uh, primary designated hitter, but um, he. Uh, He's not going to be used in the DH role. I mean, the only way the Giants, I mean, the Tigers are going to keep that bat in, in their lineup is if they have him play in the outfield. And he's not really a good outfielder. I mean, he's much better as a designated hitter. And that could come into play. Because remember, the Giants have the home field advantage in this series, friends. So, games one and two, and then possibly six and seven if it's needed. So, I mean, how is that going to play out in those four games? But once they get, the series gets to Detroit, games three, four, and five, I mean, I think Detroit's got will have a bit of an edge thanks to Delman Young being used as the DH. So we'll see how that goes. Um, look at um, the Giants' side of the ball. You also have uh, Marco Scudero, like I was trying to say, MVP of the NLCS for a reason. He had one hell of a series, had a 500 average, 14 hits, and it wasn't just his bat. He also did some things with his gloves too. I mean, he made some spectacular web gems, if you will during that NLCS with St. Louis. And, you know, he pretty much carried the Giants to victory in that series. And then, of course, you have uh, the Giants have their two-headed monster of their own, uh, Pablo Sandoval and uh, Buster Posey. I mean, did some great things against Cincinnati in the NLDS, the division series, but when it came to the NLCS, didn't really do all that much. Uh, So if the Giants are going to win this series, they have to get going, just like Cabrera and Fielder have to get going for Detroit in order for them to win their first World Series since 1984. You know, the Bleshy Boys team, Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker, Kirk Gibson, and, of course, Jack Morris was also on that team as well. And the late, great Sparky Anderson, God rest his soul, manager of that team. And, yeah, so that's that's just a interesting observation I had to come up with there. So, I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, the batting turns out. But, I mean... It's really tough. I mean, I, I might ha- I might just have to give this a draw. I mean, both teams are stacked offensively. I really can't pick one over the other. But whoever has the more timelier hits and the more clutch plays, that's who's going to win this series. Managers, um, Jim Leland, Bruce Bochy. I mean, Leland obviously has the experience edge. Um, both managers have won World Series. Leland with the Marlins in 97. And Bochy leading the Giants to the World Series just two years ago. So, um, yeah, uh, so now it's time. Who wins this series? Um, very tough to call, not going to lie. Uh, behind the scenes last night after the wrestling forum, Michael Bullock told me that he likes the, the uh, Detroit Tigers to win this series in six games. Bold pick, Nomar, I'll give you that. But at the end of the day, I got to go with the San Francisco Giants in this series. I mean, they've won it more recently. I mean, and what after what they did to the St. Louis Cardinals in, in that, comeback in the NLCS, outscoring them 20 to 1 in those three games. I mean, that is going to be very tough to beat. And 
I think they're pitching. I mean, Verlander is their only good pitcher. And I think, you know, ultimately San Fran is going to have enough firepower to win this series. I say the Giants win this series in six games and win their second World Series in the last three years. All right, that'll do it for this video. Um, of course, uh, tomorrow, I mean, uh, Friday night, uh, if, uh, if all goes well, we will have, we will be back with an all-new edition of Strictly Sports Presents Football Friday. So join myself, Derek Ferreira, Michael Bullock. Uh, not sure about Michael Fletcher. He'll probably be busy, but, um, you know, join us 1030 Friday night as we will have our predictions for the remaining games of the NFL Week 8. I believe there's 13 remaining games as well as we, uh, we will also unveil our power rankings for the week, our newest power rankings. So stay tuned for some fireworks there. And then, of course, uh, Saturday night, um, we'll have our preview of the WWE Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, as well as uh, another power rankings, our top 10 greatest Hell in a Cell matches of all time. And then on Sunday night, we will have our recap of Hell in a Cell, 11 o'clock, you know, after the pay-per-view. And then Monday night, of course, uh, next Monday night, of course, another all-new edition of the Wrestling Forum. So very busy a uh, few days coming up starting on Friday night. So hope you all tune in. So with that said, uh, thank you very much for watching. This is Anthony Floyo saying, you know the routine, everybody. Thumbs up. Talk to you later. Yeah. Throw it up, Fortune 4 style. Bye for now and have a great rest of the week, everybody. You're watching The Tone 25 on YouTube.com.